Stock Market for Beginners 2020 edition. Welcome in guys. If you're new here, I am Jeremy. This is a financial education channel. And today I am going to teach you all the basics that you need to know if you're newer to the stock market. I'm gonna teach you everything that a beginner in the stock market could ever possibly know. I'm somebody that's been fortunate enough to make a lot of money from the stock market over the past 10 years. And I've been taking stock market investing super serious for the last 10 years. And so I want to answer the 10 most popular questions as somebody that's just getting in the stock market, trying to learn about this stuff, the stuff you need to know, okay? So what I'm gonna teach you here today, I'm gonna teach you what is a stock in the simplest way possible. If there's one thing I'm really good at other than stock market investing, it is teaching others on how they can become successful investors and in understanding the markets, okay? So I'm gonna teach you what is an actual stock? What's the share of stock? What is the stock market? Not a lot of people even know what the stock market is. I'm gonna teach you how to actually buy a stock in this video here today. I'm gonna teach you how you actually make money from stocks, which are actually many different ways you can make money from stock market investing. I'm gonna to talk to you why it is important to invest in stocks, like why you should care about investing in the stock market. I'm gonna answer the questions like, why pick individual stocks? Why not just put your money in an index fund? Something like that. I'm gonna talk about what you actually should be looking at when judging a stock. So let's say you're, you're researching a stock. What, what are the things that you actually need to look at, okay? We're gonna answer that today. What's the worst case scenario when you invest your money into a stock? We'll talk about that in today's video. What is the best case scenario for when you invest your money in a stock? I will answer that today, and we're gonna also gonna talk about how you are taxed on profits when it comes to these stocks. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button. And when it comes to stock market for beginners, this is a video I do every single year. I did a stock market for beginners video in 2019. I did a stock market for beginners video in 2018. And I think I did one in 2017 as well. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Hope you get a lot of value out of it and leave me a comment if you get a lot of value out of this video. So with that being said, let's get into this guys. Stock market for beginners 2020. Okay. What is a stock? What is a share of stock? Well, essentially a share of stock is actually ownership in a company, okay? So when you buy a stock, let's let's use, we're gonna use um, like Apple stock for an example for this video. Like most people know of Apple. They're a huge company, right? They make, you know, iPhones and iPads and all those sorts of things and Macs, right? It's the biggest company in the world. And it's the most profitable company in the world. So we use them as an example for some of these things. So let's say you wanted to buy some stock in Apple. So you go ahead and you purchase some shares of Apple stock. And now you are actually part owner of Apple Corporation. Now you are a very, very small owner if you only buy one share. And if you were to buy all the shares, you would be 100% owner of Apple stock. But unfortunately, Apple's like a $1.4 trillion company. So you would absolutely need a massive amount of money if you wanted to purchase all the shares. But that, whenever you think about buying a stock and what is a share, it just represents a part ownership in that actual company, okay? So whenever you buy a stock, you're literally buying part ownership in the underlying business there, okay? So that's what a stock is. What is the stock market? Well, the stock market, I think of it essentially, imagine like there's a big warehouse. And in this big warehouse, let's imagine you got, you know, your shares of stock and you can trade them with somebody else. And so all of a sudden you come up to me and you're like, hey, I got this one share of Apple stock. I'll sell it to you for, you know, $300. And I look and I'm like, do I wanna buy Apple stock? Okay, you know what, I'll buy that from you. And so I go ahead and I give you $300 and you go ahead and give me that Apple stock. We just made what's called a stock trade. And so in the old days, that was essentially what it is. The stock market was this place that you went to trade stocks with other people, or you went to trade your money for shares of stocks out there, okay? But nowadays, everything is done online. So all these shares being traded, if you go ahead and buy a stock from somebody else. Now it's all done online and it's done in, in literally like milliseconds. So it's super simple and it's completely opened up the game where you don't have to necessarily live in New York City to be at the stock exchanges or something like that. You could be on vacation in the islands and, and be buying stock nowadays, okay? But that is essentially what the stock market is. It's just a place where people buy and sell shares. And the only difference is nowadays it all goes through the internet rather than actually being at a physical location to place those trades, okay? 
So that's the stock market. So how do you actually buy a stock? Well, you need to set up a brokerage account, an online brokerage account. A lot of you guys might know something called the Robinhood app. And that's an app that a ton of people that are newer to the stock market end up getting involved with. And I don't have anything bad to say about the Robinhood app. You could also use something like Fidelity Investments, something like TD Ameritrade. There are pluses and minuses of all those different brokerages. I can tell you for myself, I've been involved with Fidelity Investments, investing with them for well over a decade now, and I have nothing bad to say about them. So that's my personal brokerage of choice, but you really can't go wrong with most of these brokerages nowadays, and especially a lot of them, they don't even charge you for the trades, which is amazing. So basically, I mean, let's imagine that Apple situation where you wanted to buy one share of Apple stock. When I first started getting in the stock market a little over 10 years ago, it was actually like $20 for every time I bought or sold a stock. Now you can do it for free. So all you need is the money in your account basically to buy those shares, okay? Now you can do this through your computer, you can do it through a tablet, you can even place trades now on your smartphone. And so it is super simple. You could actually go to literally the stock market in New York City, but that doesn't make much sense. For 99.9999% of people watching this video here today, you can literally just buy stocks directly through your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever you have or through your computer if you choose to do it that way. And so that's how you actually buy a stock. And when you set up a brokerage account, it's very similar to setting up any like, let's say bank account. You're going to need to enter in all your information. You're going to need to prove, you know, who you are and all those sorts of things. So your money's secured. Okay. So that's how you actually buy a stock. Okay. Now, how do you make money from a stock? Well, there are actually many, many different ways that you can make money in the stock market, but we're just going to cover two in this video because this is more of a beginner's video, obviously. So in the main two ways you can make money in the stock market is you ever heard the expression buy low and sell high? That's essentially what you can do. So imagine you buy Apple stock 20 years ago, way before the iPhone was out or the iPad or Apple had all this massive success, right? You buy Apple stock 20 years ago and you buy a bunch of that Apple stock, man, here today, 20 years later, you are probably a very, very rich person because you can sell off those shares for, I don't know, 10 X or 20 X or maybe a hundred X than what you paid for those shares. So basically buying shares low and the company has success over time and you getting to sell that stock for a much higher valuation than when you had bought in that stock. Okay, that's the main way a lot of you guys will make money from the stock market. The second way is actually making dividend income. So not every stock in the stock market actually pays dividends, but a good chunk of them do. And when a stock pays you off a dividend, it's essentially money that's just credited to your brokerage account that you can even invest in that same stock or different stocks. So making that dividend income is amazing. So almost every single person watching this video that's going to get involved with the stock market, those are the two ways you will make money from the stock market. Buying stocks low, selling them high, and making that dividend income and using that dividend income to go ahead and compound into more and more gains over time, okay? So those are the main ways on how you can make money from the stock market. By the way, you can make money other ways in the stock market as well, doing you know complicated things like stock options and things like that. Not things we'll get into in today's video, but there are other ways you can make money outside of just buying shares low, selling them high, and making dividend income, okay? Now, why even invest in stocks? Like, why should you invest in stocks? And why should you invest in the stock market in general, okay? Well, there are three main reasons at the end of the day, and these three reasons are the same reasons that got me involved in the stock market when I first got in the stock market in 2008, 2009. And these three reasons come back to this. The first one has to do with your money. So if you think about a lot of other investments you can make out there, right? you're trying to make your money into money, right? A lot of those investments are very costly. So some of them you need thousands of dollars to get started, some tens of thousands, and some even hundreds of thousands of dollars. When it comes to stock market investing, you could open a brokerage account online on your phone in probably 10 to 15 minutes, and you could put as little as like $50 or $100 in there. And bada boom, bada bing, you are up and you are ready to start investing, okay? So the fact that you don't need a ton of money to get started in stock market investing is huge. When I first started in the stock market, I, my first investments were probably less than 500 bucks. And in total, I probably had like $1,000 to my name at that particular time. So it, like pretty much any other investment class at that time was unrealistic. But stock market investing, investing was like this thing that was actually possible for me. And nowadays, I'm fortunate enough to have hundreds of thousands of dollars just in individual stocks. And it took a while to get here, but it was absolutely worth it in the end because I was just able to get started in the end. And a lot of people never even start with investing and that's a lot of trouble there, okay? So that's the first reason you get to start for very cheap. Also, you get to make a lot more money in the stock market. If you're a very successful stock market investor, you can make way more money in this than any other investment. Like the investment that's usually compared the most to something like like stock market investing would obviously be real estate investing. 
And real estate investing is amazing, but generally speaking with real estate investing, you're not gonna get a 10%, 20%, 30% return from real estate investing. Like that's just super unrealistic. But from the stock market, if you're a really good stock market investor, you can get 15, 20, maybe even 25% a year on average. Meaning some years you'll actually do much better than that. Some years you might do a little worse, but on average you're doing very, very well. And keep in mind, if you just have your money in an index fund, on average that money's gonna grow about 8% per year. So the gains you can get from stock market investing are amazing, okay? And the third reason has to do with the information. The information is so easy to get if you're researching a company. If you wanna look at Apple stock and you're thinking, ah, man, let me look into Apple, you can have a fundamental understanding of Apple's business model within a three or four hour span. Because you can literally just go on Google and type like Apple Investor Relations and start listening to like conference calls with Apple where they talk about their business model, what happened in the last quarter. You can listen to investor presentations. A lot of companies have those on their investor relations page. You can read the annual reports, the 10 Qs that go super into depth on how the business actually makes money, what the profits margins are, what the gross margin is, what the net income is. You can learn all this information and it's all right at your fingertips that you can get from a computer or your smartphone that's in your pocket. And for that reason, it's amazing where a lot of other investment classes just don't have that ease of getting the information, okay? So those are the three main reasons that you want to invest in the stock market. Now, why pick individual stocks? Why, act, why say, you know, I wanna buy some Apple stock. I wanna buy some Amazon stock. I wanna buy some Facebook stock. Why individually stock pick? I wanna buy some Tesla stock or some Uber stock. Why individually stock pick and not let's just say put your money in an index fund or something like that where you probably get like 8% on a year on average or something like that. Well, the reason it is so great to pick individual stocks if you have the work ethic and you know all the things to look for in stocks is because at the end of the day, the gains you can get are just you know amazing. So you know I hope you guys are enjoying my pictures here. I'm certainly not an artist, but what I drew out here is I drew a barbell. So imagine you go to the gym and you just lift this little barbell each and every day and it's got hardly any weight on it. Will you be able to stay in decent shape and your muscles be decent? Probably, right? And that's kind of like, like an index fund. You will be able to get gains over time, but if you up that weight, which is individual stock picking, the gains you can get are insane. Now there is a little more risk when it comes to picking individual stocks because if you just put your money in an index fund, something that tracks let's say the S&P 500, your money is insanely diversified, where if you pick, pick individual stocks, say, let's say you pick you know, your five favorite stocks to put your money in, your 10 favorite stocks, or your 15 favorite stocks. It's not diversified, let's say, around 500 stocks, so now if one of, well, you know, one of those stocks goes bad, it can hurt your account quite a bit. So there's a little more risk when it comes to picking individual stocks, but the gains you can get if you're a successful you know, individual stock picker are astronomical. And over the course of a 10, 20, 30 year time, horizon, it's just a complete game changer. You can go from doing, you know, okay to, oh, you're like super rich or something like that if you're a very successful individual stock picker, okay? You look at somebody like Warren Buffett, it's unbelievable. And that guy's such a great stock picker and such a great person as far as a businessman. He's been able to, you know, have a net worth of, you know, 100 billion or whatever insane number it is. And so individual stock picking, I love it. That's what I've been doing for over 10 years now, okay? Now, what do you look at? Let's say you want to buy a stock. Let's say you're looking into Google stock or let's say you're looking into Tesla stock stock or any stock in general, okay? What do you actually look at? Well, you're gonna first want to go to the company's investor relations page. You can literally just Google it. Tesla investor relations page. Let's say that's a company you wanna research. You're gonna wanna read their 10K, their 10Q, which the 10K is like an annual report that talks about the company over the past year and kind of what you know things are doing. 10Q looks at the latest quarter, last three months span. You're gonna wanna listen to the latest conference calls maybe for the last quarter or two so you can get up to date on the business and on those conference calls, you know, those apps a bunch bunch of different questions to the CEO and CFO about different things that are going on. So you can just learn a tremendous amount of the company. And from there, you got to figure out from there, you basically, is this a business model you think is going to do well in the future? You think it's going to expand? What are the competitive threats in the space and things like that? Once you figured out that and you say, okay, I love this business, then you start going on to the valuation and you start looking at income statements, balance sheet, future growth rates, what you expect the company to do, future PEs, trailing PEs, price to sales ratios, and all those sorts of things. Okay. Okay? It's a very complex process, and especially if you're somebody new, you know, hearing all those different terms is gonna be quite confusing. Don't worry, it takes a while to learn all this. But those are some of the most base fundamental things you're gonna wanna look at when it comes to looking at a company. And at the end of the day, when it comes to stock picking, the, the biggest things are having a long-term horizon, okay? That's number one. Number two, fully understanding a business and liking that business, believing in it for the long term, and making sure you're getting that stock for an undervalued valuation or at least a fair valuation. Those three 
three things are key. And if you're able to successfully do those three things, you're gonna likely make a lot of money from stock market investing over time, okay? Now to finish out with these last three things here, okay? What is the worst case scenario if you buy a stock, okay? Let's say you buy some stock in this hat company right here, okay? Let's say this is called ABC Hat Company and they, they sell hats, okay? And you're like, oh man, their hats are awesome. And I think they're gonna continue to expand the market and I think these hats are amazing, okay? Great, you go ahead and buy some shares of stock in ABC Hat Company, okay? The worst case scenario for you if you buy that stock is that they went bankrupt, they couldn't raise any more money, they couldn't make any money, no one bought their hats, and literally you lost 100% of your investment. So let's say that company was $100 a share, you buy your one share in that stock, you just lost 100 bucks. Now if you're buying great companies that are fundamentally sound, the chances you would ever lose 100% are pretty slim. And when I mean pretty slim, I mean probably less than a 0.1% probability. I don't believe I've ever invested in any company in my life that went bankrupt. Over the 10 plus years I've been in the stock market, I made a few mistakes with a few stocks out there, but even those companies didn't even come close to bankruptcy. So the chances you would make a mistake that bad where all just, you know, no one wants to buy their products, they can't make any money and they can't raise any money and your, your value goes to zero, very low, but it is a risk going in that you gotta understand. And that's, that's the worst case scenario, you lose 100% of your investment. What is the best case scenario for buying a stock? You know, this, the, let's go back to the, the hat company here, okay? We buy this ABC hat stock, okay? The best case scenario is infinite on this stock, okay? You can gain, you know, 1,000% on the stock, 10,000%, 100,000%, 100%, like there's no limit to how much money you could make on a stock. I've seen great stocks before, you know, 5X, 10X in value in a matter of two or three years. Like it's unbelievable. So there's no like such thing as a top on a stock. The best case scenario is literally that company goes to infinite. And when I personally pick stocks and what I like to think about is, can I see the stock price doubling over the next, you know, let's say three to five years. And if I can realistically see that or me just, you know, doubling my money in general over a three to five year span, then this is definitely a stock I wanna be part of. And I don't just think about the reward potential with the stock, I also think about the risk potential. So I also think about what is the, the chance is I lose 100% of my money. And, and the best things for me when it comes to judging stocks is when I can find that opportunity where the reward is potentially a 2X, a 3X, a 4X, a 5X, a 10X, and the risk level is extremely low that I would lose, let's say, 50% on my investment or 100%. Because that's when I'm really you know, willing to, you know, I live in Las Vegas, and if you know a really good bet, you bet heavy on it, right? Imagine you're at the poker table and you got a royal flush. No one's beating your your hands so you can push your, your chips all in. And those are the opportunities I really look for where the reward potential is huge and the risk is extremely small, okay? So that's the worst case scenario and that's the best case scenario for you with a stock. And the last thing we gotta talk about here is Uncle Sam and how are you taxed on profits when it comes to stocks? And the truth is, if you haven't sold a stock, even if you're up on stocks, so let's say you buy you know Apple stock and let's say it's $300 a share, and let's say Apple stock doubles in price and it goes to six. $600 a share. As long as you don't sell that stock, you don't pay any taxes. You're not actually going to pay any taxes until you decide to sell out of that stock. So if you do sell out of that stock, you know, let's say Apple stock in this scenario, then if you bought it for 300, then you made another $300 in gain, then you have to pay $300 worth of taxes. But you don't pay a full $300 of taxes. Usually, at least if you live in the United States, you'd pay a 15% tax rate on that $300. Now, in different parts of the world, tax rates might be different. But I know in the United States, you know, for that example, on that $300 of profit, we'd have to pay 15% of that to the government. But we will have had to have held that stock for at least 365 days to qualify for the capital gains rate, which is 15%. So we will have had to hold that Apple stock for 365 days. Now, if we sold it before 365 days, so let's say we bought that Apple stock at 300, it goes to 600 in six months. And we're like, hey, this stock's fully valued now. We want to go ahead. We want to ring the register. We want to take profits on this stock. Okay. Okay, great. But now that gain is going to be taxed as regular income. So that's gonna to count toward your regular income. And so generally speaking, people's regular income tax rate is gonna be higher than 15%. So now you might have to pay 20% to the US government or 25% or 30%. And once again, tax rules are different for different places in the world. And so you'll need to Google this if you're living somewhere else in the world and you wanna know specific tax rates around this. But I can tell you in the USA, if you sell any stock for less than a year with a profit, you're gonna probably pay you know, 20%, 25%, or 30% 
10% tax rate, which is definitely one of the advantages to being a long-term investor in stocks because you just are taxed much lower than a lot of other folks that are trying to get in and out of stocks all the time, okay? So this was Stock Market for Beginners 2020 edition. I hope you guys really learned a lot from this. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button and leave me a comment down there if you are interested in getting involved with the stock market and starting to stock market invest or over the past year or so you have actually gotten in the stock market. I hope you guys got a lot of value from today's video and thank you for watching and have a great day.